crew. All right, so I'm gonna do another video tutorial. And all right, for those of you that don't know, I just recently moved to Colorado. Beautiful country out here, except compared to New Mexico, which is a desert, it snows a lot, right? I mean, like not too long ago, within the last month, we had like three feet of snow. Not all at once, but nonetheless, throughout the month. And uh, that's the most snow I've ever seen, guys. So anyways, left New Mexico, came to Colorado, left all my fancy equipment out there, my studio, my cameras. So we're going to try this with the phone one more time. I know there's a lot of you that don't like it because some of you uh, complain about the portrait or the landscape way that I hold the phone. It's a pain in the butt. Believe me, I know, but it's either that or more picture tutorials, which, you know, by the way, I've gotten a lot of success with the picture tutorials. So I've gotten a lot of uh, wonderful emails. And I like it, but I think it's time we do another video tutorial. What do you think? So bear with me, guys. We're going to try and do it in segments. Uh, I'll go to YouTube and see if I can hook them all together and give you one finished product. All right. So the reason I'm doing this, this tutorial is because I've seen a lot of people do wonderful pieces of work out there. But I've seen some people that still scratch. You don't know what scratching is? Okay. Scratching is when you create a landscape whether it be a terrain or mountains, whatever it is, rocks, and you scratch. You create your own highlights. That's good if you're a beginner. I know I've seen a lot of uh, intermediate, advanced level spray painters doing it out there. They don't want to get out of their comfort zone. Shame on you. So, calling you guys out, I want you to step up your game a little bit. Create the highlights with other paints. This painting that we're going to create today is going to be a black and white. So we have no choice to use but to use white. I think this is going to be a, a good way to bring people into doing their own highlights, you know, without having to scratch everything. Uh, a lot of people that have been doing art for a long time will tell you that negative space is something you don't want in your paintings. It stands out too much. It's too white. It's too bright. So you want to use colors. If you're going to use blue mountains, you want to have a little light blue to create the highlights, right? You don't want white. It stands out too much. But anyways, enough talking. Grab your black and your white. Bear with me, and here we go. Crew, all right. So I went ahead and added some black here. Yeah, I know, I covered the faces. I figured, why not? They don't need my publicity, do they? I did a little bit of black. My favorite brand. My favorite brand. I get this question asked every day. Color Place. Now, I know Walmart, for some dumb, dumb reason, they're not selling it anymore. Uh, my second favorite. Rustoleum. I was actually sponsored by Rustoleum. Good brand. Uh, don't really care for the fat caps. They get stuck too much. I, I struggle with that a lot, a lot. So, anyways, all right. Added some black there with a sea sponge. Remember, I don't mind using brushes, guys, but I personally try not to. So, we're going to create our tree leaves. And this is so much easier than using a sock or using a piece of cloth or. I've seen people use some some weird stuff out there. Don't use underwear, guys. Come on. Use some sea sponge. It's really awesome. It works really well. You're able to create really realistic looking type of uh, bushes, tree leaves. Okay, so we're just going to add this randomly here. See? See? This is all I'm doing. That. So I was talking earlier, I was telling you guys that I, I, I've seen a lot of wonderful artists out there. And I've made the comments, hey, get out of your comfort zone, don't scratch. And they're like, no, no, we love scratching. Well, all right. But like anything, guys, my comfort zone is landscapes, right? That, that I've always been guilty of that. Even when all we could do was spacing Reese. I remember that time. If you guys didn't know, man, it used to be a time where you get burned to the stake if you try anything else besides space paintings. But I was an artist before I became a spray paint artist. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a... Ch I got these magazines. This is the free magazines. You go into a store and they have like a stack. So I, as you can tell, I pack up, right? I get like 10 of them. But they're really cheap. You have to watch out for these because when you start removing... Your, your uh, spray paint, you actually remove the paint with you and it'll give you a little bit of that that tint of the colors that it's below. All right, so we have some tree leaves here. 
We're gonna add a few more. Maybe here. Okay, that's what we have right now. I'm gonna stop the video so that I have enough so I can record the entire video. But I'm gonna add more, uh, more tree leaves, more bushes in the background. So stay with us, guys. Oh, getting fuzzy. All right, stay with us, and we'll see you guys here in a few. So again, with the sea sponge, all I did was just tap into some black. I added some random grass strands. You guys remember what the grass uh, technique is? Very, very simple, right? It's also very similar. In fact, it's the same thing as the uh, fur technique. This is what I use to create animals. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about this technique, check out the tutorial. I think it's called the Eye of the Tiger. It's really cool. It's got the Rocky theme in the background, which, by the way, YouTube gave me some, some grief about that for using it. But uh, anyways, that's how you do it. Very simple, very basic. You don't have to spend a lot of time to... Look, this is all I'm doing. Huh? All right, now check this out. A little bit of black. Again, poor girl. All right, here we go. Magazine sheet. I'm just tapping. Okay, some rocks here in the background. Now I've gotten a lot of wonderful emails saying, Spreka, so you make it look so easy. Guys, it is easy. It's very easy. I mean, you're seeing what I'm doing, right? Oh, yeah, look at that. You can see how the paint is really coming off these magazines. Well, but you know what, guys? They're free. And they work. They work. On occasions, you'll get, like, if her face was... Well, it is. It's pretty light. You'll get a little bit of that color in your painting, but uh, thankfully we haven't gotten any of that in this one. Okay. Just creating a terrain. Do I know how I want this terrain to look? Yeah, I have an idea. But one thing I've always said over the years, man, I've been doing this since 1998. 99 is when I really started pushing it up. So I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, one thing I, I'll always say is the painting paints itself. I know it sounds corny, but it really truly does. I know exactly what I want, how I want it to look. But then something will happen along the lines where you, once you're done with it, once you're... Well, I wouldn't say done with it, but once you've added a few little textures, you realize, oh, you know what? This would look so much better if I add a, a rock right here. Kind of even that out a little bit. Or just removing some of that black. I don't want it to be too, too dark on that area. And so as you're painting, you start to see that it takes shape in a different form. I just recently posted a painting. It was a black and white painting, and it had a nice little river that went through it. I'm not doing the river on this one. But why is Fricasso? Well, only because I think I've done enough rivers. I think you guys should have the hang of it by now. I mean, if you guys want to see some more, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely add a couple more. Notice how the natural highlights become to, uh, th they begin to shape the rock, the terrain. So, so if I drag it down, it'll give it the effect of land. See that? That's all I do. That's all I do. Yeah, you'll go through black like nobody's business. But, that's why it's important to have a couple of blacks. Right. See, I have a little cabinet here. You can see I have all my spares down there. Plus, I have double colors up here because the kid and I uh, paint together. Oh, he's doing so well. He's coming along. All right. Uh, 
I like the way that's coming out. I really, truly do. I like all my paintings. I am my worst critic. But my number one fan. I know. It's weird. But I do. I like my paintings. I like I like painting it. You know, it's very relaxing for me. Now look at that. Look how easy we were able to create a terrain. Now I'm going to put the video on stop. I'm going to finish creating some terrain on this area. Then we're going to fade it out with a little bit of white. Perhaps, you know what? We'll begin creating the sky. How? Ah, very simple. It's a black and white, right? So we don't use blue. I'm just going to use a little bit of black to create a gray sky. Yeah. Look at that, see? Just like that. I'm running out of black. It's a big painting. Let's see, what size is it? Uh, I've gotten this question many, 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 many. I guess I didn't tell you guys many, many, many times. Uh, that's the size. 20 by 30. Uh, Elmer's foam board. Walmart brand, guys. Get the cheapest stuff you can get. Uh, that's another question. Montana spray paints. I used to be sponsored by Montana. In fact, I think I did a couple tutorials with, with their brands. Uh, they're good. Just not for this kind of paintings. Which is why I had to stop using Montana. But anyways. Uh, color plays. Uh, I hate to use Krylon. I really do. It doesn't mix very well with the rest of the paints. But for some reason, uh, Walmart didn't have any orange. Uh, spray paint so I have to be very careful the way I use that in fact maybe I'll make another tutorial where I show how to combine the two paints so you don't get like a pasty stringy type of uh, chemical reaction all right guys stay tuned I'm gonna continue painting this and then we'll come back to this all right so that's what we have added some more rocks just kind of went back and forth here I'll do another quick example of how I did that I guess you can cheat. Tap, 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 tap. Now, I know some of you guys are very critical as to how you do this. I'd say it doesn't quite look like yours. Now, notice, guys, I'm just mirroring it. Just mirroring it. Okay. Nothing too technical. Nothing. No secret techniques. This is a great way to practice your doing your own highlights without having to scratch. See, most people at this point, or some of the artists that I've noticed, would come in and create something like that. Now, do you notice how even if I'm backing away, your eye automatically goes to that spot? That's the negative. This right here, guys, by the way, the blank canvas is called a negative space. So, yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to have your eye be attracted to just one specific spot. You want it to kind of randomly go throughout the painting. All right. Oh, this is going to be a little hard. I didn't think this through. I am going to create some trees here in the background using my infamous funnel. Now, guys, when I started calling these... The spray castle tool and the spray castle funnel and all this stuff. I get this asked a lot. You know, guys, when we started this, as you guys may know, there is no there's no tool specifically made for spray painting. So being that I'm a designer and an engineer, I made my own tools. Uh, it's a long story. Hey, believe me, it's a lot. It's better cost effective if you make your own. So I show you how uh, I used to get them uh, made professionally made with plastic and everything but ooh, that was too expensive and it's a long story so anyways that's how you do it see that Move some of these cans out of the way you just tap yeah. Create branches 
Now, remember that in nature, everything's random. I know I've said this before. So you don't want to make your... Oh, not random enough to where you look like a drop. So I'm just going to go back and forth here a few times. But you want your... See, to get some sort of curvature on your on your trees, on your branches. I'm not worried about this part. You know why? Because just like we did the terrain earlier, see that? We can camouflage it with the the terrain in the background. And there, it doesn't look like a complete blob. Same with that one, see that? All right, guys, so I need both hands. So I just showed you the basic technique of how I did this. When we come back, there's probably gonna be a few more trees throughout the painting. So stay tuned. All right, crew. So what I did, so I added a couple more trees, as you can see. I also added a little bit more tree leaves here in the background. Sea sponge. So far, no brushes. The only brush we've used, magazine sheet, sea sponge. Now, I've seen a lot of people use brushes. Am I mad? No, not really. I think it kind of goes away from uh, what spray painting was all about. You know, when I got started into it, I used to paint with, uh, in fact, I was actually quite good with brushes. But one of the things that I love about spray painting is not only how fast it is. All your your tools, your brushes, you can get at home. Very inexpensive, right? Very inexpensive. All right, so now that we've created a little bit of a background here, I'm going to add a little bit of white. Now, the white... Remember, always shake. I haven't used it, so it needs to be shaken and sprayed. All right. What the white is going to do, and I recommend you guys practice with black and white paintings for this matter. This is going to give us our light source. I'm going to have a light source right where we usually put it right here. Right? Something like that. And it's going to disperse. Notice what I'm doing. See how it looks like natural light? Covering the background, look at that. Awesome. I'm gonna add a little bit of that here on the ground. It's okay, you don't wanna completely block these trees out because we are gonna add another layer of trees. Uh, we're gonna have some trees here and these are gonna be black. So it's gonna give you the illusion that they're closer to you, right? While these ones in the background kind of diminish with the light coming in. So you have your sunburst or your light burst, and this is the area it covers. You can add a little bit more, but I personally wouldn't. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer of trees here getting closer to us, a little bit more uh, grass strands, because perhaps this grass right here, I need to do this with the smaller piece. It's too thick for my taste. Perhaps these grass strands right here, aren't getting the sun that's coming in, so they have to be a little bit darker. Yeah. Yeah. And it just adds to the illusion, guys. Okay, so let's add another layer of trees. I'm going to try and do this with one hand. We weren't successful the first time. Dang golly, answer because I can do anything. Here we go. You know, that's the mentality you have, guys. I know I, I get criticized a lot. But I do. I feel I can do anything. And I feel that if everybody had that mentality, can you imagine the possibilities? The endless, huh? All right, so we're going to add another layer of black. So bear with me, guys. I'm going to put this on hold. And you guys know the techniques I'm going to be using with the magazine sheet. Just like this. To create some terrain. Look at that. 
Okay. Stay tuned, guys. Be right back. All right. So here we added another layer of of uh, silhouette trees, right? You can see them. It's pretty obvious where they're at. I'm going to tear off a piece of it. Uh, I didn't think this through again. All right, hold on. <laughs> I had to use my teeth. Hopefully I don't have black teeth. All right. We're going to use a little bit of sea sponge. Earlier I complained that it was too thick for me. The grass strands, the way they were coming out, way too thick. All right. You know, the only thing I can tell you guys, uh, this is in reference to an email I got recently. I was an artist and he was telling me that, you know, he, he's thinking about stop painting because he gets a lot of grief from other spray painters that tell him he's not very good or he shouldn't be trying. You know what, guys? If I would have stopped, I would have never gotten as far as I've gotten with this. Um... You know, and it's pretty far. I, n I never really, growing up, never really saw myself as an artist. When I was in high school, I represented New Mexico uh, with oils, pastels, and acrylics. So I can paint. It's just, I don't know, like I said earlier, I'm my own worst critic, right? So never really quite saw myself going anywhere. A few years later, you know, we held the, uh, the record on PBS, KNME, Albuquerque, New Mexico, for the highest ranking show in the area for spray paint so don't give up guys don't give up you know i i use this analogy a lot jesus christ himself got criticized come on we are bound to get criticized we are bound to get those uh, those people I, I call them sprayer haters right everybody has an opinion but don't let that opinion especially if it's negative bring you down my opinion counts for anything. I say, I believe you can do it. Keep trying. Keep trying. Don't give up. It's easy. If you come in here with the mentality of, you know what? I can do it. I can do it. I will do it. I hate to show how much of a nerd I am, but you guys, one of my favorite quotes of all time, Yoda. Do or do not, there is no try. So... I don't really try. Sorry if the camera is moving so much, guys. It's just that I'm moving. All right, we're just going to add a little bit of terrain here. See how that white was a little bit too white? It was attracting attention. Well, when you scratch, it does the same thing. You may not see it because you're used to seeing it. But believe me, somebody with hasn't seen your paintings before, they'll notice it. They'll notice it right away, especially if they have some sort of artistic background. They might mention it. No, I'm not. But please don't be like, oh, Spray Castle's talking crap. No, 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 no. I'm not talking crap. I'm trying to push you guys to the next level. What is the next level? Well, we did paintings that reference space, right? We used stencils. We Look, I still have them, right? All these little circular caps. That's what they're for. I'm teaching my kid how to use it. I think it's very important for him to know the basics. And in order for him to know the basics, he has to know how to do space paintings. But then when you require a little more detail, seeing space paintings, you can create planets, stars, just by creating a little bit of sunburst or the star technique, a little bit of white, let it sprinkle. There, detail looks like it's there, but it's not quite there. When you get into intricate pieces, something like this, then the detail becomes a little bit more noticeable. So I'm saying, get out of your comfort zone, guys. Get out of your comfort zones. I know, I say this while I'm doing my my landscapes, huh? I know. Do as I say, not as I do. But hey, I did my time with space paintings. I more than did my time with space paintings. I just, you know what? I find painting landscapes very relaxing. I usually picture myself sitting right in this area. It's usually a lawn chair, and I see myself looking into, into the background there. All right, so what I'm doing here... Oh, still too much. And it's creating some little grass strands, breaking some of these hard lines. And by adding a little bit of grass. All 
All right. So far with me? Oh, good. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working my way down here. What is it going to look like? I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll see. We'll find out together. I think I want to add some more plants right here. And the way I'm going to do that is with my handy dandy sea foam. And I'm going to darken this area a little bit more. Let's see, we need some more plants over here. Okay, so let's start over here. All right, we'll do the same way right here. You know what would be awesome if there's a technique I came up with a long time ago that helped us to come up with, with well, with the paintings that we do today. And I try naming it after, a, I am a big fan of Bob Ross. And he had the wet on wet technique. So I called it the wet on wet technique. They had, there's some similarities to it. Later, after the show got on PBS and we started growing and we had our own brand of spray paints and everything, we changed it for other reasons to the spray and spray technique. So maybe we can incorporate that a little bit. That's where you add some paints in the bottom, cover it with the neutral color, and then scratch away, right? Well, we can't quite do that here, but we can perhaps scratch some of the trees that are closer to us, giving us the effect of uh, bark. I like that. Well, we'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. All right, so stay tuned, crew. As I, I'm just going to add some more bushes here, perhaps another layer of small trees and rocks. All right, crew. So using the same technique. Now, I know I was going to do a little technique here where I was just going to kind of, I don't want to say scratch the trees off, but it was going to kind of combine the paint together. And it was going to create a lot of negative space. So being that we're talking about how not to leave so much negative space, See how your eyes is automatically drawn to some of this negative space? But anyways, uh, I don't want to do that. So what I did instead, see what I mean? The painting constantly changes. I added a little bit of white, not as much as we did on the first layer, just a little bit. To give it another little uh, layer, a light layer of light that's coming in. So the next layer that we add, uh, again, it's going to be a silhouette of trees. It's going to look darker, right, than before because we added a light layer. So that's what it looks like so far. I notice I added a bunch of little plant life in the background. Now, uh, I still don't like the way some of this grass came out. See, I criticize myself a little too much sometimes regarding painting. Bit of a perfectionist. It's not a bad thing. It's just. And it's not a great thing either. People are like, oh my god, that looks great. And I'm like, well, the grass could look a little bit better. Or the light source. Or, you know, everybody goes through that. Everybody goes through that. So guys that are out there that I get a lot of emails saying, oh, you make it look so easy. Guys, I'm my own, I'm my own worst critic too. Like I said earlier, I'm my biggest fan as well. I, I like what I paint. Oh, guys, don't give up. Don't give up. The worst thing you can do. Keep trying, keep trying. I know sometimes I spend a little too much time on the smaller details. Otherwise, this painting would have already been done. But as the saying goes, uh, the, the devil lies in the details, right? You want your paintings to look as realistic, at least I do, as realistic as possible. I want that when people look at them, they say, really, that spray paint? No way. Yeah. That's what I shoot for. So I try and make it realistic as possible as possible. So a lot of grass. I spend time creating the little grass details. And I place them in locations where they kind of go around the rocks, you know, um, to certain spots. And I hate it when it looks uniform, kind of like it did here. 
So I'll break it up a little bit. To do that, you need a smaller, a smaller piece of a uh, foam brush. Something like that. All right. Well, I'll keep working on the details in a little bit, but let me show you guys how to add another layer. I know you guys know, but what kind of a teacher or instructor would I be if I don't actually show you? All right? Black funnel. We add another layer. Ah, uh, you know what? And the closer we get, the thicker the trees have to be. I say that, and then the tree comes out really thin. Ah, that's okay. It has to be at least that thick. So I'll add some more black to it. I think I'm going to need both hands, guys. But when we come back... I should have created another layer of trees. Yeah, we go through black. I'm not nobody's business. Go to the black quite a bit. All right, something like that. So I'll add a few more trees, guys. Stay tuned. All right, crew. So. Went ahead and added the other layer of spray paint uh, of the silhouette trees. Uh, added some more bushes here. You can see some uh, some of that grass strands there. And to be honest with you guys, I'll probably go over it a few more times. Just you know, you know me. I'm not OCD, but I say that, and then here I am doing it. Uh, let's see, a little bit of black. What I need to add is the other layer of leaves that are closer to us. Remember. We added a light layer of white in the background as ambient light. So we did it the first time. Let me see if I can. Okay, we did it the first time with some of the trees back here. And then we added a layer of silhouette of black trees. And so that's the finished product. I wasn't able to finish the last uh, recording. I ran out of space on my memory card, but this is what it looks like. Now, the last time we were talking, we had added an extra layer of silhouette trees here in the background. The only thing I did different, guys, is once I added the trees, I wait for them to dry just a little bit. I added the light and dark technique. If you don't know what the light and dark technique is, go check out my videos on YouTube. Guys, I've been doing this for about 17 years. Believe me, I have experimented a lot. Uh, the, light, the light and dark technique. All right, let's talk about it. Use the straight edge. Put it right here, right next to a tree silhouette. Or it can be anything. It could be a column even. You spray right here where my thumb is. Remember, you never spray directly on the painting. You spray on the straight edge. Let the mist come down. And it will give you this nice little effect. Well, you can see it here too. But see that little light, little light line right there? Then you use the black. Come over here in the back. Spray right here where my thumb is. Let the, the mist come down. And it'll cover it in but and it'll give you a nice little 3D effect to the trees. Now this is flat, guys. I know it doesn't look like it is. That's the beauty of it. See? Flat. Flat. But it gives it a nice 3D look to it. So I recommend you experiment with that. Um, all right. Well, this concludes this tutorial. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun making it. So, all right, crew, if you guys have any questions or comments right here on my Facebook or on YouTube, I look at both channels. Until next time, keep those cans spraying.